Welcome to Fundamentals of Public Speaking, COM 151. This orientation or course tour will help you to see how the course is built, what to expect in terms of the content, and how to navigate as you progress through the semester. So let's get a start here with the front home page where it'll show you the My Announcements section. You should expect to get some regular announcements from me. And so we'll see those pop up here as well as on the home screen of Blackboard where all of your courses are. So hopefully you'll be able to access those not only here, but in your student email for at student.swic.edu. So please make sure you have access to that so that you can get into it pretty easily. Where you want to begin uh, is the obvious, the Start Here tab, where you click on that and there is a number of details that I think will be of value to you. So once you get into that, it gives you sort of a, uh, a brief overview of how to get started. Obviously, you have the course tour available and then access to the syllabus course calendar, which gives you the details of what to expect each unit. The objectives map, which shows what are the big picture objectives for the course and how do they connect to each of the units and the objectives for those as well as the assignments that will be included within that unit. There's also a document here that talks about course content and how each piece of the class is valuable in helping you with other parts of the class as well as your future um, in academics and in your career path. There's also a layout here of grading practice so the procedure and point breakdown both in percentages and in the point value is laid out for you so you can see each unit what percentage that's it's worth of your overall grade and how many points that translates to all the way up to a thousand points or a hundred percent and then the scale breakdown is also provided so it is your traditional 1000 to 900 uh, is 100 or is an A, excuse me, and then a 899 to 800 and so on. So that should give you kind of an idea of what is expected and how the whole process will work out in the grand scheme of things. There are no late assignments accepted. Um, you would receive a zero if you submit something late, if it allows you to submit. Please contact your instructor if something pops up that is different from what you had expected. You know, you've got an emergency, there's a major illness, that kind of thing. You'll just want to reach out to your instructor. This folder here gives you links to a fantastic plethora of SWIC resources. So not only a link to the Technology Assistance Center, which gives you how, you know, troubleshooting or how to do certain things technology-wise, but also if you make use of the Disability and Access Center, the library and its contact information, online tutoring, and so much more. I mean, there's tons and tons and tons of valuable resources here, and it's all free, which is fantastic. So please take some time to sort of look through these and see if there's anything that you need either right now or as you progress through your course um, or in your future as a student at SWIC, what you could make use of and uh, what might be of value to you right away. So that is the student resources folder and there is also a folder down here called policies and procedures and that gives you some of the big broad policies and procedures that occur at SWIC but also some of the policies and ways we do things specific to this class alone. So we've got uh, basic information on online and remote learning, and then also how to do discussions, how to communicate and do a substantial post, um, communication during a conference with your instructor, netiquette or the appropriate way to communicate online and why that's appropriate. Also instructor feedback timeline. Uh, you should expect to get a confirmation or a response from me when I email you or when you email me within 24 hours. The only time that might take a little longer is on the weekends, so just keep that in mind as you're preparing to submit questions. And then a turnaround time of about seven days would be typical for assignment feedback and even in most cases for speech feedback. But there is a little bit more time involved with specific speech grades, so once that due date hits, it could take me a while to get to every single person's grade um, and feedback for each speech. 
The additional information here is listed under the withdrawal policy that would relate to if you choose to or are required to withdraw from the class. There are points at which I will do that and then there are also points in which you can do it yourself. So that kind of gives an explanation of that here as well as a number of other important resources and tools like a link to your student rights and your conduct code as well as academic rigor and, and dishonesty policies and so on and COVID possibly policies and speech time. And there's just tons and tons and tons of information here that you might find valuable. Uh, the final thing under the Start Here tab is the pri excuse me, privacy and accessibility links, which if you are concerned at all or might need to make use of or would like to make use of accessibility features, this can kind of give you a little bit of a breakdown of each of the tools that we use in this class and how their statement of accessibility is written and how they deal with student data uh, privacy. So that's all under that Start Here tab. And once you've gone through the material in here, you should be able to go straight to Unit 0, which is kind of our getting started unit. So we'll get through to that point once you've looked through all of this stuff. There's additionally a syllabus specific tab, which gives only the bare uh, re base requirements that you might need. For example, the syllabus, course calendar, core competency link, which is um, this class does focus a lot on some of our core competencies at SWIC. So it's important for you to understand how that plays a part in your overall education. Also gives you a link directly to our library, which is, this is not the SWIC library, this is the quote, library of resources for McGraw-Hill, which is where your textbook is housed. So when you click on that, you should be able to get right into the course, the McGraw-Hill course that we are working on. And I am an instructor, so it looks a little different for me than it might for you, but you'll go straight in there and it should give you access to what you need in terms of a link to your textbook and so much more. And there are multiple ways to get access to this, but that's just one of those that I think you'll find um, valuable. So we'll go back, get straight into that Blackboard section, um, and then we'll talk a little bit about how that course, how this course as a whole will be set up. And it looks like I'm going to have to go sign out and sign back in, so we'll get, we'll get that going. So that was under the syllabus tab. And there's also some detail on the textbook as a whole, how to get registered with Connect. Um, your course fees should give you automatic registration. All you'll have to do is just give a one-time amount of detail about yourself, um, giving an email address and so on. But you should have automatic access and will not need to purchase anything in addition to what you already have. There are um, opportunities to purchase a textbook that is hard copy. It's one of those loose leaf textbooks, so you're more than welcome to take advantage of that through the bookstore. And I think it's $15, $20 for the loose leaf copy if you are more of a physical text sort of person. Otherwise, the ebook and all of the other tools you'll need is accessible um, digitally. And then if you have any issues, any technical problems, or any kind of uh, difficulty, there's some access to the tech support and facts that might be of use to you. Additionally, if you have either never taken an online course before or not had to use certain functions in Blackboard, there are links that will help you with each of those available. So there's a button for doing assignment uploads and how to make use of that, a button for completing a quiz, and then finally, one for discussion posts, because those are the three most common things that we will use in this class. So there's buttons here, but they're also available in another part of the course, which I'll show you in a second. The uh, hardware and software information is also listed here. This is some basic information for any online course. And then specifically for this course, you will need to have access to a microphone and a webcam. So I gave you a couple of links to some low cost options if you don't already have one inside your computer. Most laptops today um, and mobile devices have access to a microphone and a, a webcam. So it shouldn't be an issue for most folks, but occasionally it is. And if that is the case, hopefully these are some low cost options for you. 
And then other additional opportunities and options can be found um, through the software page and also if you contact the TAC, the Technical Accessibility Center. So that could also give you some opportunities. And then finally, some things that you should be able to do, like make use of email, Microsoft Teams, and Blackboard, because um, we'll be using Teams for a couple of things in here. Word documents, PowerPoints, and so on. So you should be able to do those things in order to be successful in the class. So that is the Syllabus tab. The professor information gives you my contact details. There is an audio version of this, just in case you would prefer to listen as opposed to read, but all of my contact details are here, a little blurb about myself, office hours, and a link to my office contact in Teams. So there's um, some good information and easy accessibility for you there. This course content tab is where you're going to live most of the time. So the course content is basically all of our units. This course is set up, uh, um, actually a very purposeful setup that is based on um, research as to how best students learn and retain information. So the process is very similar across the board for every unit. And once you get that first unit down, you'll, you'll pretty much see how it goes and it, it's not too bad after that. Now, unit zero is very simple. It's only a very short time, a short period of time to complete it. So it's not anything too overwhelming. But once you get into unit one through five, you'll see a very similar structure, which follows these stages here. Stage one is to experience something. So you're going to actually do something. Stage two is to reflect on what you did and learn new information. Stage three is to conceptualize. So basically taking the information that you reflected on and learned and putting it into some kind of practice. And then finally, stage four is to present information. So that is basically where you're, you're at the point where you're doing a speech. And that's sort of how this looks. And there are a total of five traditional units and then unit zero, which is your getting started unit. And as I mentioned earlier, these quizzes, discussions, and assignment buttons are also available here if you need help doing one of those things. For the stages, you're basically going to start with stage one in the unit that you're in, and once you've completed it, you move to stage two. Once you've completed that, you move to stage three, and so on. So it's pretty self-explanatory once you get going um, and isn't too bad in the grand scheme of things once you're familiar with the process. Unit zero, as I mentioned, is very much a getting started aspect of the unit. So it should give you, for all units, the dates, topics, and so on for what to expect for that unit. And then once you click on it, when you get inside, you'll see a what to do tab. And in this unit in particular, everything else is listed below. So I'm going to actually hop out of this unit since it's not common, uh, the same common structure as the rest of them. Um, and it's pretty self-explanatory. And I'll head right over to unit one, which is your very first speech. So when you get into one of these standard units, you'll see those four stages I mentioned earlier. And obviously always start with stage one. Click on that. And once you get into stage one, it tells you what exactly you need to do, what you need to complete in that stage. So for this unit, it's asking you to read and complete the smart book quiz that is for specifically for chapter four. Now you will, um, Make note as you're going through these smart book quizzes, they are pretty unique. They are not the kind of quiz where you read and then try to memorize and then take the quiz and get some answers right and some answers wrong. It's an adaptive quiz. So how that works is you will go in and you will start taking the quiz once you've finished reading the chapter. And as you go through the quiz, if an answer is incorrect, you will be provided with another quiz or another, excuse me, um, question of a similar nature that will help you to kind of rethink the topic from a different perspective. And if you still continue to struggle with that particular topic, it will refer you to the exact point in the textbook where it talks about the information related to it and then take you back after that to continue with the quiz. Grades for this are on a completion basis. So you have the entire time to complete it. There's no time limit, no restri restrictions as to how much you need to put into it effort-wise and time-wise. It may take you five minutes. It may take you an hour. 
It just depends on your comfort, comfort and familiarity with the concepts. So as you go through it, if you can get all the way complete with the chapter, for example, chapter four, smart book quiz, then you will receive 100%. So even if you answered six or seven questions incorrectly, once you get complete, you've answered all the topic questions correctly. So you get 100%. However, if you wait till the last minute and say only complete 20% of it and you don't get all the way through at mastery in that quiz, you will end up receiving um, a 20% on your score as opposed to 100% because you only completed 20% of that particular assignment. So that's kind of how smart book assignments work and they are linked directly here and go into that McGraw-Hill resource that I was telling you about earlier, the textbook and digital tools. So it should be, once you get the first one and second one done, you'll start to feel more comfortable with how that process works. It's pretty straightforward and once you get into the rhythm of it. So for that stage one, you'll complete that first, your first speech, chapter four, smart book quiz. You'll participate in a discussion post on anxiety and your mindset, which will ask you to review this or watch this video, which is really interesting. I, I find it very fascinating. I'll ask you to watch this, consider your anxiety levels, um, and then answer a couple of questions and then respond to each other. So if you've ever taken an online class, discussion boards are pretty common. But as always, ask questions, uh, reach out to your instructor if something isn't clear. And then you will be conducting a PRPSA assessment, which is basically the personal report of public speaking anxiety assessment. It's one of those surveys you take to find out how anxious you are <laughs> in a circumstance, and in this case, public speaking. So that is an Excel spreadsheet where you'll just type in your response and it'll calculate it for you to tell you what your anxiety level is. And that's the completion of stage one for unit one. Now you'll note that unit one is, is probably a couple weeks long, so you have time to complete it all, but you wanna do this as early as possible so you can get through the entirety of that unit. So once you've finished with stage one, then you'll go back and click on stage two. And stage two has another set of information that you'll want to achieve. So you will review the basics of the speech that you're going to be doing. It gives you kind of the basic outline of what to expect for the speech, the rubric that goes with the speech, and then a video that gives you some ideas of what kinds of things would be appropriate for this topic. And, how might the instructor do the speech if she was going to do it and so on. So this gives you kind of the basic rundown of the speech that you're going to be required to complete. There is another lecture video. Anytime it says watch the whatever video, it is a lecture directly from your instructor. So you'll see a lecture right here from me on anxiety. So you'll want to watch that. It is available through YouTube if you want to watch it on offline, so to speak, if you want to download it. There is also unit quizzes that are specific to videos. So these are actually really straightforward and, and pretty simple. They ask you to basically um, take what we had discussed in those video lectures and apply them to your own experiences or just restate what are some of the core requirements for a speech. So they're, they're very straightforward. They shouldn't be difficult and you are more than welcome to have them open while you're giving or while you're watching the videos as well. Just think about how you want to approach it. There should not be a time limit on them. The next part of this is to do three more smart book quizzes. So again, they could take you five minutes each or they could take you an hour each. It just depends on the individual and, and your comfort level with those th chapters. And then you're done with that stage. So once you finish stage two, you'll go back and you will click on stage three. And stage three is basically centered around a conference between yourself and, and me. And in this case, you will create a, you'll sign up for a time slot and there'll be a link right here that'll give you a place to sign up. And then you will decide, all right, I'm gonna do my conference via Microsoft Teams or I'm gonna do it on in a face-to-face -face setting. It just depends on the semester and your needs and requirements. And the, the conference will span, the options will span a number of days. So you'll choose what date and time works for you. 
before your conference begins, you'll want to complete the worksheet that goes with it. So in this case, it's an introduction speak, speech worksheet. You'll click on that. It should open up and give you the basic layout of some simple things that you're going to need to do. What are some questions? And then you'll put your answers type answer here and then you will save it to your your computer. I'm going to not save, but you would save and then you click on the assignment and you will upload browse my computer and upload it there. So that's kind of how an assignment will work. Every assignment has a rubric so you can click on that rubric and see how the grade scale works. Some of them are completion based, some are correct or incorrect and so on. And so you will submit your assignment there before your speech conference and then your conference attendance is with you and I either via Teams or um, face to face. And so we'll complete that. Once you are done with your conference and you've completed your worksheet, then you can record your speech and that will be laid out here and you'll have instructions. There will be instructions about exactly, it depends on the semester, whether there's COVID restrictions or, or whether we have a little bit more flexibility, but there will be instructions on how to conduct a, a presentation in your home or in a, a classroom that you have reserved and such. So there are typically, if there are no COVID restrictions, it would be an audience of your choosing that are usually 16 and older, so not children, uh, that consist of about six to eight people. So you can pull family members, friends, and so on, and there's a process of how that works. So that will be laid out here with the rubric as well. And then there are uh, details on how to record your speech and how to upload a pre-recorded speech if you choose to do that. And so that's how this whole process will work. And again, I will do some instruction, additional instruction on that as we go through. And when you're ready, you just click on the name of the assignment and you get straight in and can work through um, the recording or uploading of a recording and you're done. That's the end of the unit. And so each unit works in the same way. You'll note that if you go to course content and that was unit one, if you click on unit two, you'll notice it's very similar in its layout here. So kind of the same process. Stage two has some of the learning material and the basics that you'll have and so on. So hopefully this gives you an idea of how the course works and you are comfortable with the process. But as always, reach out to your instructor if something is unclear and we will do our best to help you as much as we can. Thanks so much and have a fantastic semester.